Welcome, folks. So I want to talk a little bit today about topology and how topology measures shape. And I'll just be doing this from a visual perspective. So the overused joke is that a donut and a coffee mug are, um, are indistinguishable to a topologist. They can't see the difference between their donut and a coffee mug. And that's why that's because a topologist considers shape up to a notion of um, invariance. And, and two shapes are considered to be the same if you could stretch one or bend one to get the other. Um, there are nice animations on Wikipedia of this, of this donut deforming into a coffee mug, but here's sort of a little um, a sequence in time. You, you take your coffee mug and then you're not cutting it, you're not slicing it, but you're pushing down the left-hand side. You know, so I'm pushing down on this coffee mug, okay, and so it's becoming shorter. And then I really push inwards even more. And the, the mug part is starting to dis disappear. And now there's just a little bit less left of the mug part, you know, maybe just a couple drops of coffee. But then you could just push that in and smooth it out. And you get this uh, donut that might not be the tastiest to, to eat. But in terms of the shape, you've sort of taken this clay coffee cup and you've molded it and you've formed a donut without ripping it or tearing it or stretching it. Um, so to a topologist, these two shapes are the same because I could deform one to the other if it was made out of Play-Doh without ripping or tearing or gluing. Why might you care? It seems like we've lost a lot, right? Well, an analogy would be, you know, if you're in computer science, you've learned about mod two arithmetic or if you do cryptography, you've learned about mod p arithmetic, or maybe p is a prime. And when you do mod two, you're taking a number and you're reducing it to just whether it's even or odd. And, and sometimes by reducing information, you can actually see more, okay? So sometimes the geometry, the exact shape of this coffee mug or donut matters, but other times the topology, just you know what it can bend into uh, is, is all that matters. And it is useful to highlight that, just like you might highlight that a number is even or odd. So let me give you some examples of shapes that are homotopy equivalent and shapes that are not. Every time you see a squiggle, that's two shapes that are homotopy equivalent. And every time you see a squiggle with an X through it, then those shapes are not homotopy equivalent a topologist can tell the difference between them and would say it's they're different. So this hollow square, you could, uh, if it was flexible wire, you could stretch it to get this hollow triangle. And again, if that were flexible wire, you could stretch it to get this uh, hollow circle. A homotopy invariance, a homotopy equivalence can change the dimension. So I would say this hollow square is one dimensional. Whereas the square annulus here, this is two dimensional, right? If I cut out a little bit of this uh, green solid annulus, it looks like a piece of paper. These are homotopy equivalent, even though they have different dimensions. So if you had, um, you know, this, this green, square annulus, if it were flexible enough, you could shrink it down to just a wire frame in the shape of a square. A circle is not homotopy equivalent to a disc. You'd have to puncture the disc. You'd have to cut a hole in the disc, you know, before you could shrink it back to get the circle. However, if you, um, if you have a disc, you can shrink that down to get a point. So a disc that's filled in, you can collapse that down to a point and that's considered the same shape. A two-dimensional sphere, so the, you know, the, um, you know, like a balloon, the surface of a balloon, if you puncture that, that can also shrink down to a disc, which can then shrink down to a point as well. And then, you know, a, a two-dimensional sphere, a balloon that's punctured is not the same as an unpunctured sphere, right? This unpunctured sphere can hold air, you know, in, inside of it. Um, 
let's say I take a sphere and I glue on, uh, I don't know, some sort of leash. Um, those are not the same. But the sphere with a loop attached, it turns out that is the same as this hollow torus that's been pinched on one side. Right? So one way I could have gotten this shape is take a torus and pinch it on one side down to a point. How do I see that this homotopy equivalence here between the two sphere with the loop added and the punctured torus? Well, imagine that you drag this end of the sphere and you drag, you, you grab this end of the sphere and you grab this end of the sphere. And then you, you let this rubber band here shrink, shrink tight. Okay, so this rubber band gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And as you're doing that, the sphere gets stretched out and the sphere forms this entire um, crescent moon here, right? And this entire loop has been shrunk down to a single point. So that's a little hard to see, but those two shapes are considered to be the same uh, to a topologist like me. Let's start going around the other side. A circle is the same as a circular annulus, which is the same to me as a loop. Um, this loop, however, is different than the figure eight. The figure eight has two holes, whereas this loop only has one. You know, the figure eight is the same to me as this uh, sort of dumbbell shape. And, you know, you could start with your dumbbell shape and then just shrink, shrink the huh. neck until you get down to this figure eight and then maybe rotate it. Was there a question? One of the hardest ones to see that for now I'll leave as a challenge is this one, okay? Take a, a hollow torus, so the surface of a donut and puncture it, okay? Cut a little hole. It turns out if you do that, that shape can shrink down to a figure eight as I've drawn right here. And that's a fun one to think about it. Um, so let, let's talk about that later. Let's revisit that and see how that works. And then at the very bottom here, um, we have a hollow torus versus a solid torus. So this solid torus, the insides have been filled in. Um, and the hollow torus is not the same shape as the solid torus. But the solid torus, as we already discussed, is considered the same shape as a topologist to this coffee mug. Funny story about that, um, you know, um, Scientists do need to do a better job at advertising um, their work and describing their work to non-scientists, but sometimes it's go, it goes awry. So there was a public news article about uh, topology. And so they included how topologists, you know, sort of think of donuts and coffee mugs as the same shape. All right, and so they wrote this nice article, but then the figure they included had not one of these coffee mugs made out of ceramic, but a plastic coffee mug with no handle. And a, and a plastic coffee mug with no handle, you know, is no different to me than than just a disc. It's it's not the same as the donut. So that that went awry because they sort of missed the whole point. The coffee mug without a handle is not the same as the donut. It's the it's it's the handle that makes the the coffee mug the same to a topologist as a donut. Any questions uh, for this public video? Really quickly. Yeah. Uh, the loop next to the figure eight. Why uh, can you not just pinch this one to the left? To the left, this one. Oh, the, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. This so one. So we're manipulating the others, right? So why couldn't we pinch this loop to create a figure eight? Great question. Yeah. So why can't we just like? you know, um, move this in, you know, and move this in. And then at the very end, um, pinch them together to touch. Okay. So <clears throat> let me tell you, let me first draw where that goes wrong. So we have this, that is homotopy equivalent to this one where they get a little bit closer. And that, that is homotopy equivalent to this one where they get extremely, extremely close. Well, that's, that's not so good. 
Okay, where it breaks is at the very last step. So I've put the X through this homotopy equivalent symbol because that very last step is where you break it. So you're allowed to stretch and bend, but you're not allowed to cut or, or glue. So right here is where you're taking two points that formally were not um, glued together, like um, uh, you know this point, this point right there, and that point right there. We're formally not glued together, but now we're gluing them together, right? Almost think of like a string, right? These are two strings. Um, you'd have to get some wax to melt those two strings together, and that's that's what you're not allowed to do. Um, it's a little bit like. It's a little bit like this torus and the pinched torus, right? I could start taking one side of this torus and making it thinner and thinner and thinner, and that'd still be the same shape until at the very end where I take that ring and I make it thinner and thinner and thinner down to a single point. That last step, I've glued this ring together, and that's why these are not homotopy equivalent is because of that last step. Okay. Great question. Are there questions? Thanks.